Welcome to the MAKE course, I'm Rudi Schlaf. In this tutorial I will discuss control structures, conditionals and loops. So we will look into if and if else conditionals and of course also into comparison operators. We need those if we want to use conditionals. And then we will also look into loop structures, in particular the while loop. Before we get started I should point out that the introduction to programming videos are based on the eeawesome.com videos that introduce to the Arduino in general. So go to eeawesome.com if you have no idea about the Arduino and click on videos and then you find here my six introductory videos that uh, tell you how to plug the Arduino in and download the software and so forth and then do a few simple things that uh, bring you up to speed. And after that you're ready for the introduction to programming videos. Let's first have a look at simple conditionals. So here we want to do something if a certain condition is met. That allows us to react to things like a switch is pressed or a number of loops is, has been executed or a certain amount of time has passed. There is a limitless number of possibilities to use these structures. Here it's expressed as a flow diagram. So we have the conditional here, so that's typically an if statement or something of that nature. And I say here, if the switch is pressed, then we execute the code that is here in the yellow box. Or if the switch is not pressed, then we simply go on and do nothing. So that's a standard if conditional. Let's have a look real quick at the setup that I'm using in the EE Awesome video number six. So this is here the button that controls the LED and if you saw this video then you know if I press this button now, if I press this button now then the LED will come on. And of course you know if you looked at the sketch in that video that we're using an if structure to achieve this. Let's have a look at the Arduino sketch that drives this system. This here is from the EE Awesome video number six. So I trust that you watched that video already and you know what's going on here basically. In the setup we define an output pin and an input pin. The output pin is used to drive the LED and the input pin is used to read out the button. We also define here a variable called button state, which is a byte variable. That means it only occupies eight bits, one byte in memory which is enough because in the button state of course we only need to store a 0 or a 1 depending on the button is uh, pressed or not. So we could actually do this just with one bit uh, in a byte but the smallest variable that one can define that is a byte so we actually waste here 7 bits that we don't really need to store this uh, button state in. Now in the main loop we now fill button state with the condition of that button pin, whether it has 0 or 5 volts on it. And this is done by digital read. This tells us whether the button here is connected to ground or is pulled up to 5 volts. Now button state is used in the if statement. So that's our conditional. So here we say if button state is low, then we execute the commands that are between these wavy parentheses and in this case now we only have one command that says digital write LED pin high which turns on the LED. So this comparison operator determines whether these two are the same and if they are the same then the if statement executes what's in between here. If this here is not true, right, if they are not the same, if button state would be 1 and we have here low so the comparison would yield not true then or, or, or false then we would execute what comes after the wavy parentheses. In this case we have a else statement so what we really have here is an if else conditional so that's an expanded form of the if conditional and if else that allows us to specify some code that is being executed if this condition is not true. And so in this case it would mean that the button is not pressed and then we would execute digital write LED pin low so that would turn the LED off. 
Here you see the matching flow diagram for the if-else uh, conditional. And the difference to the regular if conditional is that this block of code is added after the conditional and that we go from the code that is executed if the condition is true, we actually jump back on the uh, program flow after this block of code. So this is only executed if this is not true, if it's false, and this here is only executed if it is true. Let's have a brief look at the comparison operators. So I'm here on the Arduino website and we can go to learning and then reference and on the reference we get an entry for every single Arduino command and here we have the comparison operators. So we just use the equal to operator but there are five more and so you have not equal less than greater than less than or equal greater than or equal to and so you can use all these in your if conditionals. Now it's interesting to compare these here with the arithmetic operators they are up here so these are your usual mathematical operations there is often a little bit confusion between the assignment operator and the equal to operator because they both use equal signs but you see here we have two equal signs and here there is only one so if you make a comparison you use two if you assign you just use the single equal sign the final item I want to discuss in this tutorial are loops and a loop well if you have a conditional statement like the if then you can make something that occurs again and again and again until some kind of condition is met and then it exits back into the main program stream and so there are structures in C++ in the Arduino language that uh, take advantage of this and so we have the while and the do while and the for structure okay let's try to make one of those loops and so let's start with the uh, for loop so I'm here back on the Arduino uh, reference so let's click on for and here you see the uh, syntax of this uh, statement and so here they write for and then in parentheses you have the uh, start condition so here we initialize a variable called x as an integer that means in difference to the byte variable that we just used this here has two bytes of memory so we can actually make numbers here that go up to 65,500 roughly 2 to the 16 and we start this variable at 0 you could put here something different in there if you wanted to start counting at a uh, higher number now here we have the test condition so this is the condition at which this loop is being ended so as long as x is smaller than 100 in this example the loop will uh, continue running and then at the end here we have the increment or decrement statement and here we say what is happening to x every time we go through this loop you could also write here x equals x plus 2 then every time you go through a loop it would be counted up to and then between the wavy parentheses as usual with these commands we have the code that is being executed in this example here we simply print uh, this number x you could actually try this out with the serial port if you watch uh, video number four of the e awesome videos which is about using the serial port let's look here at an example they use uh, the variable i again an integer starts out at 0 and then runs up to 255 and it's incremented in one steps and then they do analog write so they write something on a pulse width modulated pin and then they wait for 10 milliseconds and then they repeat it again for 255 times so if we want to modify the code now of the sketch it's very convenient to actually just here copy this and then we can go to the Arduino IDE and start uh, playing with it and so let's just copy this in here and um, we need to straighten this out a little bit so now we have this uh, for structure in here of course we don't want to use uh, analog write that doesn't help us here but I want to blink the LED now 10 times every time I blink the button and so of course we need the digital write command so I just uh, move it up and then we wait let's say for 100 milliseconds and then copy then we 
uh, turn the LED off and then we need to wait another 0.1 milliseconds oh this was wrong I wanted to copy it here with semicolon it's important otherwise you get a compiling error and then we wait another 0.1 seconds so what we do now is for 255 times we turn the LED on we wait 0.1 seconds we turn the LED off we wait 0.1 seconds and then we turn it on again and do it again and again and again for 255 times now that's not what I want I want it to only happen 10 times so we put here a 10 since this is smaller and equal 10 then um, this this will run uh, for 11 times actually because it starts out at 0 and then goes to 10 so we could actually change this here to 1 and then we should get just 10 ons and offs so if the button is low if I press it then I go into this loop here and turn the LED 10 times on and off so to make this look pretty we should actually um, move these things here in a little bit okay so now we have something that looks good so let's upload this and see if this works okay here you see it so whenever I press the button now it's blinking 10 times now you know how to use the for structure let's have a look at the while structure that's a different way to make a loop and the while uh, st statement is more convenient if you want to react to some kind of external influence like a sensor reading and so forth but you could emulate what we just did with the for structure which is designed for counting up a variable that's what they did here in this example uh, you start out by defining a variable as the start condition so here in this case they start counting at zero and then you have your while loop and the exit condition is that the variable becomes larger than uh, 200 now inside the loop of course you have to count up the variable so this here does essentially exactly the same like the uh, for structure but as I said while wasn't really uh, added to C++ for that purpose while is much better if this condition reacts to some kind of event and so you could say here while sensor reading is smaller than 200 do what's inside the loop and once the sensor reads something that's larger than 200 you uh, go out of the loop and execute the commands below so let's put this to work so like last time we can just uh, copy this here and we can go over to the Arduino code okay let me post uh, copy paste this here so here we have our while statement and what I want to do now is that the while loop directly reacts to the button and so what we can do now is we can just take this uh, digital read button pin command and put it directly in here into the while uh, command and um, now while will react directly to the button so this is the external event that I was just talking about and digital read button pin simply yields the the condition of the uh, pin so we get a zero if we press the button because it connects the pin to ground or we get a one if the button is not pressed so what I want to do now is maybe let's uh, blink the LED while the button is not pressed and when I press the button then um, the uh, LED should stop blinking so in order to do that we since this year now um, will give us a true output if the button pin is high so if the if the button is not pressed so that's uh, perfect so while we get a, a true output of this digital read statement we will do what's inside the loop and so I can now I think just copy paste here our blinking commands in here 
and again we need to straighten this out a little and we don't use the variable so I can delete all this here. Okay now we have while the button is the button pin is high so the button is not pressed we will turn on the LED wait turn off the LED wait and do this again and when I press the button then we go on down here. So all we need to do now here is uh, we should write that LED pin low. If I don't, if I press the button, so this is here after the while loop, and then let's say we wait three seconds, so we can really notice it that it stops blinking. And I think this is one parenthesis too many here, so we can take all this out. You see when I click at a parenthesis then I see which one is matching it. So this one is still too many. Okay, so now we have this one matches with this one and this one does the while loop. So these parentheses enclose the commands that are executed in the loop. So let's see uh, if this is working. Here you see it, it's blinking, and now when I press the button, it takes a break. But after three seconds, it's coming back. Before I let you go, I want to direct your attention to two more items under control structures. Here there is do while, that's a, a while loop that's a little bit different in that the condition is only tested at the end of the, of the loop. So the do loop runs at least once and then we test whether we should run it again. The while loop tests already right at the beginning we, whether we should run it at all. And so that is a main difference here. The other interesting um, statement that you can use in your uh, Arduino sketches is the break command and the, the break command is used to exit from a, a while for or do loop and it bypasses the normal loop condition. So you can actually make a loop that not only checks for one conditional but several and that allows you to exit a loop if let's say a, a sensor reads something or if somebody presses a button in addition to the uh, normal loop condition. And with this I conclude my video about control structures. Thanks for watching.